Hey everybody, good morning. It's James with Love My Pups and My Breeder Supply. So today we're going to do Q&A session. I'm going to just do this one on questions about uh, DNA genetics and color information. And I've got a little cat here. You're probably going to knock this video camera down before it's all finished, aren't you little bugger? All right. Okay. So first question. Want to know about producing platinums from creams? Okay, so <clears throat> we've got a cream dog, which is literally, literally, that's always cream. We don't know anything else about this dog, so we're going to assume that this dog is not blue, is not chocolate or cocoa, um, and we want to produce a platinum. Now, remember, a platinum dog is little e, little e, little d, little d blue. <clears throat> and um, little b, little b, which remember that could be little co, little co, depending on how you do it. All right, so how do we get there from that? All right, so let me get a paper towel here real quick. Let's get that off there. Okay, so this is what we're trying to produce. This is, this is a platinum. It's a cream blue chocolate dog. And we have a cream dog that doesn't carry blue and doesn't carry chocolate. How do we get here? Well, the first thing is we want to have our star definitely wants to be, let's, let's put the stud, start off with, is the stud is what we're trying to produce. And I have a stud called Sir Humpelot. Who is that? And how, what would he produce? So get rid of what we're trying to produce. Let's see what we'll produce. We will produce little E dogs. They will be chocolate. Half of the dogs will be one copy, or excuse me, all the dogs are going to be one copy of blue, and all the dogs are going to be one copy of chocolate. So basically what, what we've produced here are, and that's the best we can do. That's the best we can do. So the best we can get out is we're going to get cream dogs that carry blue and chocolate. They will not be platinums, they will not be champagnes, but they will carry the ingredients to make, make a platinum down the road. So now let's take this dog here and move that dog up to the top here. So here's the dogs, the puppies that we produced. There's the puppies that we produced. Now we're going to take those puppies, this is the offspring, and put that with another unrelated platinum daddy. What are we going to produce? Okay, so again, we're producing all cream dogs. And remember, cream is like white paint. It covers everything up. You've got to do testing to find out what dogs are, because without it, you don't know that white covers everything up. It could be a brindle dog. It could be a merle dog. You will not know if it's cream, because cream, like white paint, covers up all the other colors. Okay, so what do we get? So we're just going to do a Punnett square on this puppy that we kept, bred back to the platinum boy, and what do we get? We get half the dogs are blue carriers, and half the dogs are blue. So we get a half and a half. Half blue carriers, half the blues. All right, let's just put that up on a little chart here. So here we go. So we've got half that are gonna be this, and half are gonna be this. 50-50, okay, good. All right, same thing happens with the chocolate gene. We are gonna get half that are chocolate carriers, and half that are chocolates. So, overall, what do we expect to get? Well, what we expect to get is <clears throat> some of the dogs are going to be blue chocolate carriers. Some of the dogs are going to be blue carriers that are chocolate. Some of the dogs are going to be blue dogs that are chocolate carriers. And some of the dogs are going to be lilacs. And what's the ratio going to be? So the answer to this is, is that we would get one quarter of the puppies that are going to be carriers of both blue and chocolate. And one quarter of the dogs are gonna be blues that carry chocolate, so they'll be chocolate carriers. And one quarter of the dogs are gonna be, whoops, one quarter of the dogs are gonna be chocolates that carry blue. And one quarter of the dogs are gonna be platinums. 
So there you go, you've got your platinums. It took you another generation and only a quarter of the dogs are platinum. So you can get there, but it's not, it's not straightforward. But that's a nice litter. I mean, that's a litter of, as long as this dog doesn't carry brindle, those dogs are gonna be fawns. So they're gonna be fawns that carry blue and chocolate. These are gonna be blues. These are gonna be chocolates. And these are gonna be platinums. That's a pretty nice litter. I mean, you've got something for everybody. You've got fawns, blues, chocolates, and platinums after one generation. So there you go. So that answered a couple of questions that people had asked. Okay, somebody's now, a lot of these questions now are specific questions about what they expect to get based on what they've read. So let's just handle these now. So, somebody has got this dog. I think this was the female, not that it matters. Okay, so that's the dog they've got. This is a blue dog that doesn't carry chocolate. Uh, we don't know that if they didn't test for it, because remember that uh, um, the animal genetic, well, these places will come back. If they're a cocoa dog, they won't show their chocolate. So they could be a chocolate dog, but we're assuming it's not. It's a blue dog that's, that, that doesn't carry chocolate, that has a black mask, that has one copy of tan points and one copy of pie. So we now are going to make that to. We're going to make that to. Um, what are we going to make that to? <laughs> I think we're making that to a. Where well, should? I, oh, I, no! Sorry, someone was asking what is that dog. They asked what that dog is. I'm sorry. So that, and, and they correctly said that they thought it was a blue fawn that had a black mask, that had a copy of, that, that, that had tan points, that had a copy of pie. It doesn't have tan points, it has a copy of tan points. A tan point dog would be ATAT or ATA. Those are the dogs that show tan points, provided there is no brindle. And they didn't tell us that, so we'll call that KYKY, no brindle. They didn't give us that piece of information. This dog with one copy, and it's a fawn, blue fawn dog, it'll have a little bit of coloration above its eyes and on its paws, so it'll show a degree of tan markings, but it will not be very, it won't be obvious to see it, it won't be really bright. All right, that's that one. Okay, the next one is, they have a fawn that carries lilac. Well, that's an interesting terminology, but let's just go at this. So a dog, dogs don't carry lilac. Dogs either carry blue or chocolate, or if they carry both, they can make lilacs. So we're going to assume this is a fawn dog. That would be an AYAY dog. And it carries lilac. So we're going to assume that what they mean by this is it carries a copy of blue and it carries a copy of chocolate. And they bred that to a black brindle. Well, the brindle dog is probably going to be an AYAY, KBR, probably nothing on that side here. This is going to be an NN or K. All the terminology keeps changing on this, so I get everybody confused. We'll call this KYKY, we'll call this K KBRKY. So this is one copy of Brindle, this is no Brindle. Um, so it's a black Brindle. So this dog is going to be DDBB. What do you get? Well, all the dogs end up being AYAY, because that's the only choices we have. AYAY. All the dogs end up either being DD, no blue, or DD, carry blue. None of that's going to show. The dogs are either BB, no chocolate, or they're going to be carriers of chocolate. Again, it won't show because you've got to have two copies. Then on this, half the dogs are going to be KYKY, and half the dogs are going to be KBRKY, one copy of Brindle. So what do you get here? Well, the answer is, is that this, these colors were not going to show because we don't have two copies. So they may be present, but they're not going to show. So we're not going to see, not see. We will not see those colors. So we have, basically, we have an AY dog that's either KYKY or KBR or KY. One copy of Brindle or no Brindle. The dogs that are no Brindle will be fawns. And the dogs that have one copy of Brindle will be Brindles. So there's your answer. You're going to get a litter of half Brindles and half, half fawns out of that litter. Okay. And the next one. So somebody breeding a blue Merrill with, with carrying brindle and tan. So here's the blue Merrill. So it's a DD dog. And it's MM carries a copy of Merrill. 
That's M, big M. We should always put the big letter first. That's the convention. So there it is right there. Uh, that carries a copy of Brindle at hand. So this is going to be an A, Y, A, T. There's the 10 points. Carries a copy of Brindle, K, B, R, K, N. There's the one copy of Brindle. Breeding that to a black and tan. Well, a black and tan can't carry blue. We're not even going to put the chocolate in here because she didn't mention chocolate, so we're not even considering the chocolate. We're going to assume that all these dogs are non-chocolate dogs. And because of that, we know we're going to get non-chocolate puppies. All right, so that's not even in it. The Merle, we always breed a Merle to a non-Merle. So this dog we're breeding to is an MM dog. So we're going to get half of them going to be that and half of them are not going to be Merles. So we've got half Merles on the puppies and half not. All right, we know that. Okay, so the black and tan, a dog that shows tan points can't have brindles. So we know the dog we're breeding to is K, K Y, K Y. So we know that. So now we know we're back to where we were the last one. We know half the dogs are going to be Brindle. Because they're going to be KBRKY. And half the dogs are going to be KYKY, not Brindle. So we're going to get 50-50. Okay. And we know that this dog is, uh, it's either AY, this dog is a tan pointed dog. So it's either ATAT, -A -T, it could be ATA. We don't know which it is, so we're just going to have to make a guess on this. So the answer is, we're going to get half the dogs are going to be ATATs, and half the dogs are going to be ATAYs. So, what do we get? We, we don't get any, all the dogs are going to be blue carriers, because we've got two copies of not blue. So what do we get? We get dogs that don't show blue or chocolate. We get dogs of which half of them have tan points. We have dogs half of which are not brindle. And we have half the dogs that are moral. Now this is interesting because the dogs that show the tan points, that they've got tan points, but they are brindle, it won't show very well. So I'm going to look at the possibility of four puppies, what we'd expect to get from four puppies. Four pups. We'd expect to get half of them Merrill, half of them not. So we're going to get two Merrells and two not Merrells. Okay. Of the Merrells, we'd expect to get half of them to be Brindle Merrells. So we're going to get a Brindle Merrell and a Fawn Merrell because half had Brindle. And then over here, we'd expect to get a Brindle dog and a not Brindle dog. So we'd expect to get a Brindle dog and a Fawn dog. So there it is. There it is. Four puppies, a brindle and a fawn, and a brindle merle and a fawn merle. The tan points are going to show up on some of these dogs, but not very many because the brindle's present. So half the dogs get tan points, but only half of those aren't merle. So you're not going to see much tan pointing in those dogs. You might get one, you might not. Okay. And the next one, we have a squirt of stuff on this board. It's kind of getting a bit mucky. Next question, next question. Um, someone's asking, what is the best stud for a blue fawn? Best stud for a blue fawn? Well, it depends on what your goals are. So I'm gonna bring this one up now because it's really was gonna be in the next Q&A session, but people have been saying, I've got brindle dogs, why don't you like brindles? And, 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 I, and I keep saying, anytime I say this, I, I, I keep saying it, but people don't listen to it. It's like, I have nothing against brindle dogs whatsoever at all. Brindle dogs are fine. I like brindle dogs, they're interesting colors. They just don't work well in my breeding program because I try to produce point dogs with tan points and tan points don't show up with brindle. Brindle's a dominant gene. If you've got it, it tends to muddle things up. And for that reason, I avoid brindle. <clears throat> but please, Quit saying, oh, I don't like brindles. Brindles are fine. There's nothing against brindles. I'm not, I'm not hammering brindles. Um, okay, so on that point, we have a, a blue fawn. So this is a little d, little d dog. We're not going to worry with the chocolate because we're assuming it's not. And since it's a blue fawn and it's a fawn, we know it's A Y A Y. And since it's a fawn, we know it doesn't have brindle present, so it's K Y K Y. 
So that's what we know about that dog. So what should you try to produce from that dog? Well, look, to get blues in the next generation is a cinch. All you do is put it with a blue dog. Every dog that you produce gets to be blue. Wonderful, you've got blues right away. You want to do something, you want to produce tan point dogs in the future? Well then, put it with an AT, AT dog. And if you do, you're going to get AT, AY, AT dogs, and those can produce tan points in the future. Not really going to do you much good in the first generation. Um, you want to produce platinums, uh, or you want to produce uh, lilacs, then put this with a BB dog, and you will get that. You get half blue, you get all blue, ca all chocolate carriers. They won't show it, but they can produce lilacs on their puppies. And then, absolutely, we're back to this brindle business. I would not choose a brindle dog. Get KY, KY, keep brindle out of it. So that's what I would do. I would at the very least mate to a, at the very least, I would mate to this a blue dog that doesn't carry brindle. And if you want to get other colors in there, then you know, introduce other colors like blues and chocolates and creams, because you, if you're going to keep a puppy and you've got a little breeding program that you want to get going, you'll produce some interesting dogs if you can get those colors in there. They won't show, just like this here, they won't show, you could get a cream in there. It won't show, you could get, but you will be able to produce more interesting dogs when you have got those colors present. So, which is the best stud for this? Well, um, if you looked at my boys, the boy that I would choose if I was bringing this would be my guy called Sir Humpelot. He's Homer Gaius. He is, he is blue, he is chocolate, he is cream, he is double A recessive. He can produce any color you want and he's a wonderful choice. But he is not the only dog out there for you to breed against, and he's certainly not the only dog that I have that you could breed against. Okay. We're coming on 20 minutes. Let's see if we can't pump a few more of these out. Uh, so somebody's asking about a blue and tan that carries cream bred to a lilac and tan. All right, so here we go. So we've got a blue and tan, DD, um, uh, and we're assuming it's tan points, AT, AT. Uh, the carries cream, so it's E little E. Since it's, uh, um, since it's, a, it's a tan pointed dog and it shows, we know it doesn't have brindle. Good. Bred to a lilac, DD, BB. This, by the way, we're just going to roll this over a little bit, give us a little space here. We're going to assume that this is a non chocolate dog. Bred to a lilac, here's the lilac with tan points. Doesn't say it carries cream, so we we'll assume it doesn't. And since it shows tan points, it has to be no brindle. So what do we get? We get all no brindle dogs. Whoop de do, good deal. We get all blue dogs, great. Half, we get all, since it's a lilac and a non-lilac, every single dog carries a copy of chocolate. All of them are gonna be tan points. And half the dogs carry a copy of cream and half the dogs don't. So there you go. So you're gonna get on a litter, you're gonna get uh, all blues that carry chocolate, they're all blue and tans that carry chocolate, they don't carry brindle and half of them carry a copy of cream. So that's what you get from that breeding. Okay. Hopefully for those of you who are learning about genetics, I think that just going through stuff is helpful. I think it's, you know, just seeing the way that it's going to develop gives you an idea about how this all works. So I've got videos just on genetics, but I think for a lot of you, I think you'll find it useful just to kind of talk about what you expect to get from different breedings because it kind of reinforces your understanding of how all this works, hopefully. Okay, somebody's asking, will an AY AT job dog show tan points? Well, it absolutely will not show tan points if you have a copy of Brindle present. If that dog is KBR, KY, or two copies of Brindle, then that dog will not show the tan points. If that dog is a non-brindle dog, KY, KY, then it will show a degree of tan points, typically above its eyes, maybe on its feet. It'll be kind of washed out look, but you'll see some shading. So the answer is, is you can see a certain amount of tan points, but to get really striking tan points, what you really need is, there's tan points come different ways. ATA produces more of a orangey tan point, ATAT -A produces more of a, of a creamier tan point, and ATAT -A -A with a copy of cream produces really nice tan points. So if you see a dog that's got really white tan points, you can almost always bet that that dog is an ATAT -A -A dog with a copy of cream.
There's 10 points for you. And we're getting near the end of this. Um, I've got a pied dog with a red eye glow. Okay. So remember, pied, again, double recessive gene, SS. That's a pied dog. If it has a red eye glow, then it is a little bee, little bee dog. It's a chocolate pied to have the red eye glow. It could be, remember, there's two versions. It could be little CO, little CO. I've drawn that as big CO. It could be CO, CO. It could be that too. But basically, it's, if he's got a red eye glow, it's a chocolate dog. It's chocolate. So it's a chocolate pied. Unless it's a moral. If it's a moral, we get red eye glow regardless of whether we've got chocolate present. So we don't know if it's a moral. And by the way, now you can test for this. Um, okay. Somebody else says, I have a white with a red eye glow. Okay, so what is that? So the white is a cream dog. So that's little e, little e. And little e, little e with a red eye glow is also that. And that's what you call a champagne. So as long as it's not a moral again, a cream, a cream dog that has a red eye glow is in fact a chocolate dog covered in cream, which is a champagne. That is a champagne, that's what we call that. And one thing to be careful on this is, is that you can have a white dog that is in fact a pied dog. A pied, extreme pied, has very little or hardly any color anywhere on it. I produce one that's just got a little bit of color on the tips of its ears. Got to be careful on those dogs, and that's another whole quick Q&A session where we talk about what you do with extreme pies. So just to be careful that you don't breed a extreme pie back to a pie or a pie carrier. Um, and just the last couple of things on this while we're running into the 30 minute mark. Test kits. So the test kits, the ones that I have been using for a long time come from targetvet.com. You have to draw blood. Those tests are pretty good. I am now selling a progesterone machine manufactured by a company called Fine, it's called Fine Care from Wondofo. I love this machine. And this, by the way, is $15 a test. You buy 12 tests for like 150 bucks. This here is like a $2,800 machine, but you're down to $9 a test, and it's super accurate. Very good, very, very good machine. Love this machine. So you go to my website, My Breeder Supply, if you want to find out about the Fine Care products. And somebody's asking about where do you get your color DNA test done at. I exclusively go to Animal Genetics of Tallahassee, Florida. Animal. Very good people. There's other people out there, genetics. They now, when you do a complete coat color test for 130 bucks, they include both the cocoa and the testable chocolate as part of that test. I love these people, they're very good. UC Davis, uh, Vet Gen, they're good too. Um, I do like Animal Genetics because they're super fast about getting stuff done. You can order te swab test kits, they're free. If you're gonna do a swab test on a dog, if it's a puppy, it needs to not be nursing for six hours before you swab it, otherwise you'll get mum's DNA in there as well. You can remove dew claws and send them off. You can prick a dog's pad to get a little bit of blood and send that off. Uh, older dogs, you can just do a swab. I like these people. Um, they are nice people, they are pretty quick. Typically, if you send your sample in, you will get an email back to say they're in the process of testing and a couple of days later, you'll get the test results that you can see on their site. So that's it. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. We'd really love it if you subscribe to us. Um, if you've got other things you want us to talk about, then just you know, put that in the comments. If we've got things wrong, let us know. Um, and uh, hey, have fun with your puppies, be nice to your doggies, and bye bye everybody.